the way things work. So I remember these ones. I, I've just heard of these. These were apparently a series of books that were like, they did. They showed you like the mechanical side of things and like did cutaways and stuff. I miss those kind of books actually, but uh, I'm not sure if this gun's going to work. But yeah, we'll give it a crack. The way things work. Oh, here we go. But yeah, like I never read these ones specifically. Um, I did find similar ones that sort of taught you like, you know, basic science in like an interesting sort of picture. Welcome to my workshop. As you can see, hmm. it contains a number of rather ingenious inventions. I've studied them all with the help of my loyal assistant, the Great Woolly Mammoth. Hi. Everything is arranged on these shelves. I have hundreds of machines here, along with the scientific principles that underlie them, the history of their development, and the stories of their inventors. Okay. So be my guest. Click on the shelves and explore my collection for yourself. Yeah, all right. Um... Let's go with whatever this thing is up here. Some sort of... Oh, like a steam pump. Oh, no. And this that. Oh, no. Oh, it's just click on the interact. I thought it was going to take me to, like, an actual interactive thing. Do I spit out the photo? Okay, it must be at a film. Huh. All right. Hmm. No. Done. Well, that didn't even animate. That one's a bit slack. Okay. Hmm. Tickety talk. Yep. Okay. All right. Well, let's look at some machines, I suppose. What do we got for machines? Oh, the A to Z of machines. Okay. Well, let's just start with A. Might as well. Oh, it goes through shit tons. Okay. Burglar alarm. Burglar alarm uses magnetic sensor to detect. Do you want to, like, tell me anything? Read it out? I see also. Uh, when the window is closed, the magnet attracts a metal bar, keeping the switch on, but if the magnet is moved, the switch opens and activates the alarm bell. Break in. Yeah, right. Oh, well, let's get out of here. Yeah, that's cool. And... Oh, okay, and it tells you, like, about each individual thing. But that was, yeah, that was... Like, it was definitely a cool concept in the 90s. Just have a big book that showed you, like, you know, yeah, the way things worked. Um, not sure. Oh, no, we can go back. Okay. So we can head back to the A to Z. Construction, auger. Um, yeah, let's go something complicated. Astronaut maneuvering unit. Getting around in space isn't easy because there's nothing to push against. The astronaut maneuvering unit... Solves the problem by using thrusters which squirt out jets of nitrogen from small nozzles. These jets produce a reaction force in the opposite direction to the flow of gas. By opening or closing the various nozzle nozzles, the astronaut can propel the unit in any direction. Uh, and just tells you. Yeah, you'd need a lot of nitrogen for thrust, wouldn't you? Oh, I'm going to get a little movie. Okay. Uh, thrust the controls, thrust the pack. Yeah. Yeah, cool. Do a little animated thing for it. I vaguely remember playing um, Microsoft Space Simulator when I was a kid. And you could actually, like, pilot one of these things. Like, I, I gave it a red hot go because it came with a, like, instruction manual about this thick to learn, like, all the fundamentals and stuff. But, um, yeah, what I played of it was fun. No, I think I, I I do remember putting in a lot of effort because it was like it was back when it was on when you'd get multiple floppy disks for a lot of games. So it was like I, th I think it was at least ten or fifteen floppy disks 
for the um to actually get it running to actually install it and a good couple of hours to install it too um anaerobic barometer i can't remember how barometers work it's yeah it reads atmospheric pressure uh handspring chain arm rocking bar Designed to a metal capsule which is squeezed by an increase in pressure. Oh, that's your little capsule there. Okay. Then move transfer to a pointer on a scale. Yeah, right. I can't remember what you actually needed to measure atmospheric pressure for. But anyway. Yeah, we'll keep going on. Okay, and we got about 12 things for each one. Yeah, I, I know how these work. I've been I've been using this a fair bit. Uh, bathroom scales work. Lever mechanism. Spring assembly. Sway someone, I suppose. Well, that sounds like my scales. They're digital and they still sound like that. Whoops. Um. Oh yeah, rack and pinion. But yeah, I do like exploring around. Like I I probably would have enjoyed this more as a book. But um, I, I think there are a fair few books in the series. But yeah, it's kind of cool to show you. Just yeah, like I guess he was like an architect or did like CAD drawing or something. Because you, you'd have to be mechanically minded to um, put something like this together. And I remember like uh, Microsoft and Carter did that a fair bit as well. Like did stuff like this but occasionally you'd have like a little animated thing that came up drum brakes yep what are the fun stuff we got in there window blinds egg beaters battery sailboat yeah we know how those work burglar alarm oh breath this is a breath tester okay um yeah how's it work pressing the set button depresses the diaphragm readying the tester for a sample as the driver blows into the tube, a pressure sensor is activated, light A comes on, and a timer starts. Light B comes on when a suitable sample has been taken. Pressing the read button raises the diaphragm, drawing the sample into the fuel cell. Alcohol vapor in the sample causes the cell to produce a current. A uh, microprocessor translates work. this current into a reading on the display showing the amount of alcohol vapor in the sample yeah like i knew it measured um alcohol vapor but um yeah i didn't realize that's how it activated it yeah worked on a little fuel cell thing that's cool that's all right uh what else was on the list and yeah don't get elephants drunk that's always a bad thing uh movie camera yeah, so I know how these work. It's not little elves, like in, little imps, like in Discworld. Um, I do remember, yeah, I remember working on a movie set, like, when they were using film. As sort of shits and giggles. Seems complicated, seems expensive to use, like, physical film as well. Because it's very expensive to, like, process and shit. Um... Each time the shutter opens, take a picture of the film in the gate is stationary. As soon as the shutter closes, however, the claw and crank mechanism engages with one of the sprockets and moves the film by one frame. There you go. Mm -hmm. Oh, the cat's bugged off. He's had enough of sleep. All right. What else we got? Can opener? Yeah, no, that works. Car gearbox. Yeah, fun stuff on the um, car gearbox. Um, oh, well, this is actually a bit more complicated than the, the other ones, isn't it? Um, oh, there's a little movie for the it. The gear wheel turns freely on the transmission shaft because it has a ball bearing at its center. Selecting a gear moves the collar along the shaft to the gear wheel. The collar's dog teeth lock into the gear wheel. The collar has no ball bearing at its center. So it turns the transmission shaft. Yeah, there you go. Okay. It's like the fork color. Oh, that's each gear wheel. Yeah, so that's what the kind of what the inside of your gearbox look like. It's all kind of smushed smush together in a real gearbox. But anyway, who's sending me messages this time of day? 
Well, it is what just after lunch here, isn't it? Ah, it's on super. Yeah, get rid of that. Um, do, 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 do. Oh, sweet. Okay. Yeah, no, um, the cap I got an external capture device yesterday and, um, it didn't end up working, which is why I went out and got the, um, the internal one, but they've just come back saying, yeah, we'll get you an envelope to send back the, um, the old one. So I should be able to get a refund on that. I'm just, I'll sort that out tomorrow though. Um, yep. Yeah, seatbelt, movie camera, calculator. What's a calculator involved? Pocket calculator is a simple computer. Most kind of simple, basic processes. Oh, you don't want to tell me anything about. Oh yeah. Sort of little process of, yeah. What happens when you push the key? Um, contacts telling the processing unit to store the binary code for that key in the calculator's memory. Oh yeah. I've seen, um, like people have actually made little mini computers and calculators in, uh, Minecraft and stuff like that. And oh yeah, the old LCD displays. Yep. Yeah, how does it work? When you want to calculate a sum, for example, fifty-six times nine, you start by keying in the first number. The microprocessor stores the code for the number in its memory, and then sends the code to the display. You then press a key to tell the calculator what operation you want it to do. For example, multiplication. The code for this is also stored in the memory. You then input the second number, which is again stored and displayed. Finally, you press the equals key. Oh, this, this pulled back on the scaffold here. Yeah. The memory, Just write it down, buddy. On the two numbers, and send I can nearly do that in my head. Yeah, cool. So what other inventions have we got? Candle, carjack. Um, yeah, I can't remember. No, that's right, yeah. Uh, wax for candle, burning wicks. Yeah, so that's how candles work. Moves up the wick by capillary action. Vaporizes in the heat of the flame. The vapor ignites, and this melts more wax, so the candle continues to burn. Yeah, capillary action. Oh, yeah, kind of like when you um, put a straw in water and close off the top. You can pull out with a little bit of water. Hmm, okay. Um, just trying to think what else I've used. Yeah, I'll figure out what else. How other things work. Quartz clock, yeah. Whereas mechanical clocks are regulated by pendulum, quartz clocks use a tiny sliver of quartz crystal. Power from a small battery makes a crystal vibrate at a very precise rate. A microprocessor uses these vibrations to regulate the clock. That's all it is, just a little bit of quartz vibrating. Because yeah, I remember having like quartz watches and stuff when I was a kid. Hmm. There you go. Silicon chip. Yeah, God, <laughs> this is sort of new shit for the 90s as well. Mm-hmm. Etch a chip etched onto it. And yeah, a bit of fun stuff there. What else we got? Carburetor. Yeah, I'd like to know what, how carburetor works. Carburetor controls the mixture of gasoline and air that flows into the cylinders of a car engine. When the piston moves down the cylinder, it sucks in air. As the air rushes past a very narrow section called the Venturi, its pressure lowers and it sucks in gasoline from the float chamber. This fuel air mixture flows into the cylinders to be burned. Yeah. Emulsion tube, venturi, throttle valve, piston. Yep. Where's the ignition? There should be a spark plug on here somewhere. What's this bit? Yeah, so that's pushing your gasoline in. And then your air flows into the, um, yeah, cool. I wonder if it gives you like the full thing on an engine too, because that's definitely only part of it. Smart. Okay. What's a smart car? Smart, smart card involve. Same as an automatic cash or credit card. 
In addition to the magnetic strip, however, a smart card has a microchip that can store large amounts of data. This makes it much more versatile and secure than a standard card. The data on the chip might be encoded signature holding holders, medical records, or a photograph. So that's basically what we've got today with like, you know, tap on uh, bank cards and stuff like that. Um, actually, no, it'd be a bit more complicated because that's meant to, um, yeah, activate by touch. It's supposed to be picking something up. Disk drive, PC. Yeah, here we go. Old school 90s PC. Um, yep, and they keep getting smaller, keep getting more powerful. Peripherals, old school modem, old school dot matrix printer. Disk drive, CD-ROM. Yeah, separate speakers. That was always a thing. Another fun stuff. What else was computer? Oh, here we go. The dot matrix printer. This is what we had when I was a kid. Um, yeah, so it was basically worked the same way as a typewriter. So it had little metal pins that would hit a, um, yeah, a carbon ink ribbon that would put the little indent of the uh, ink on the paper. Uh, stop a motor. Ooh, printhead. Well, that's a complicated printhead. Yeah, let's print something. And, the, oh, that noise it makes when the, um, yeah, when the thing I moves across. I did, see, yeah, matey sent me a thing, um, Doom M1E1 on a uh, dot matrix printer. It actually, it clapped. It was pretty good. Uh, what else we got? Coin, what the hell is a coin tester? Electronic coin testers are used in ticket and vending machines to distinguish between genuine coins and fakes. Value of a coin inserted into the slot is established by electrical, magnetic, and light tests, which measure the coin's metal content and size. Unacceptable coins are detected and returned. Okay. Electrical test, magnetic test, light test. Yeah, righto. I thought it was just like, um, it just went by the width of the coin. Maybe old school ones did. It'd just go by the width of the coin. But yeah, that's a bit more complicated. Okay. Um, but yeah, I wanted to check the laser printers. So we definitely stepped up. About late 90s, I think we got started getting laser printers. Uh, like a dot matrix printer builds up pictures or letters sent from a computer using a series of dots. Laser printers, however, use a small a laser beam so the dots are extremely small and the quality of the printing is high. Also, because they don't use mechanical print heads, laser printers are both fast and quiet. Yeah, righto. Paper charge, guide rolls, paper. Toner bin. Oh, you still need toner? And... Yeah, I suppose you would, wouldn't First, you? First, the drum charger gives the drum a negative static charge. The laser beam, turned on and off according to the pattern to be printed, changes the charges to positive on specific areas of the drum. The drum That's right, yeah, like modern laser printers have got powdered charge. ink. Toner, Positively that's right. charged paper pressed against the drum picks up the toner, creating the image. Yeah, there you go. And that's, I, I don't think we've gotten much more advanced beyond that. Like, um, it's one of those things. Differential, a lot of car stuff in this. <laughs> Let, let's alienate everyone and check out a dentist drill. <laughs> yep, just that scream. The scream is enough, isn't it? Um, what else we got? Dishwasher. Derelia gears. Oh, pedals of a bicycle. Okay. Yep, and you get your different gear ratios if you've got a mountain bike or something. Yep, fun and games. Electric circuit, electric kettle, elevator, generator, motor, endoscope. Doc, you can look inside your body without cutting it open by using an endoscope. Narrow tube is fed into the channel of the body, such as the throat or the bum. Light tubes containing optical fibers transmit light up and down the twists and turns of the tube to reveal the interior of the body. The endoscope also contains air and water pipes and a tube through which surgical instruments can be inserted. Yeah, so I think they still do... They probably do, like, digital endoscopy these days when they're putting tubes in you. Well, they do fancy stuff. Now, um, I had an older mate who got a um, 
colonoscopy a couple of years back and he mentioned um they can use a device to actually tattoo the inside of your colon so like um they use it to draw circles or mark like little polyps and stuff to keep an eye on and i made the joke of like yeah you you want to make sure he's not writing like bob was here or something <laughs> for um yeah last thing you want tattooed on the inside of your colon but yeah fun games there and they keep going back to this stupid bloody mammoth don't they i guess that's the mascot for the book uh electric chair electric guitar oh yeah four stroke engine uh power for car by burning fuel and air for perfectly timed explosions precisely timed explosions i should say that's a good name for a band i reckon crankshaft yep all very expensive oh we get to see a piston in action okay in the induction yeah drill, so you'd have your carburetor doing your fuel air mix moves down chucking it in there then in the compression stroke the intake valve closes and the piston rises squashing the fuel and air in the power stroke the spark plug fires to ignite the fuel and air the powerful explosion forces the piston downward then in the exhaust stroke the exhaust valve opens and the piston rises forcing the exhaust gases out of the cylinder the cycle yeah. repeats with the piston this all happens up very and rapidly and a second happens several lights yeah several times depending on how many cylinders is in your engine hmm definitely an intriguing thing um what about a jet yeah let's have a look at a jet engine <coughs> we got for sucking in air injecting it at high speed jet engines called turbofans drive big airliners fan at the front draws in large volumes of air well more fans compress the air and push it into the combustion chamber to be heated the air expands and rushes out of the exhaust this produces a thrust which pushes the airliner forward okay when the large front fan rotates it draws in air some of this air flows along the bypass duct. The rest flows through the compressor blades, which raise the pressure of the air. The high pressure air enters the combustion chambers, where burning kerosene heats it. The heat causes a huge rise in air pressure, so it powers the air at high speed through the rear of the engine. The hot air spins the fan turbines, which drive the engine. It then meets with the bypass air and speeds from the exhaust with tremendous force. Hmm, certainly a lot of force behind them. Uh, okay. So what are the machines that we got to check out? Fluoro lamps, Bordon gauge. Gauge. Simplest kind of pressure gauge is the Bordon gauge. Curved metal tube filled with gas liquid whose pressure it is measuring. The pressure increases the tube straightens and moves a pointer over a scale. Bordon gauge is used in the oil gauge of a car, a pressure, the pressure gauge on a gas cylinder and the depth gauge of a diver. Yeah, yep. Because some things check your level as well as um, the temp, yeah, level and temperature. Uh, fire extinguisher, gearbox, vacuum flask. Oh, and they've repeated a couple of them, I suppose. Pianos. Um, starter gun. What's in a starter gun? It's just ca like a fancy cap gun, isn't it? Um, explosive producing of gas to make a loud bang. Detonator firing pin releases chemical energy. Racers hear the shockwave as a loud bang and start their race. And yeah, I know it goes off by, um, the cloud of smoke that comes out because the, you can see the cloud of smoke before you can hear the uh, thing because light's faster than sound <laughs> this angel just goes and falls out of the sky <laughs> cool uh hair dryer gyroscope solar heater hey have these changed much collect infrared radiation from the sun converts energy into heat yep well, we sort of got these more for um, producing electricity nowadays, don't we? I love it too. I want to go to places that have solar set up because, like, I've not paid 
had to pay an electricity bill for months now. The last one I had, they said, you've actually produced more than you use. So here's like 12 bucks. I'm like, hell yeah. Hovercraft, hydrofoil. Did they even still do like hydrofoils anymore? That was such a 90s thing, wasn't it? Uh, wing shape lifts an airplane into the air as used by a hydrofoil in water. Um, yeah, so it's similar principle. There's like higher pressure water going over the top like a like a wing um yeah okay but yeah i don't see them any. i don't know if they're still used or not that's a thing uh chain hoist yeah hydroelectric turbine oh jump jet anything fun on the jump jet yeah take that shit off Yeah, and there's like adjustable things to change your thrust around. Also fairly modern for the 90s too, isn't it? Okay. Um, Carjack, Ionizer. Oh, it's just showing you how ionization works or is it something Oh, no, that's right. Yeah, they had stuff like humidifiers and stuff in the 90s. And apparently it was healthy to have a room charged with negative ions. Yeah, that <laughs> that got um, stepped on fairly quickly, I remember. Um, lasers, yeah. Yeah, let's have a look at lasers. Why not? Uh, device produces an intensive beam of light. Uh, light from a laser carries a lot of energy. Yeah, I did see it. Maybe showed me that one too of um, laser etching on guns to like just burn a design into metal. Look pretty cool. When you turn the laser on, the cathode produces electrons which move through the gas towards the anode. One of these electrons collides with a gas atom. This collision gives one of the atom's own electrons the energy to jump into a higher orbit. As the electron falls back into its original orbit, it loses its extra energy in the form of a tiny burst of light rays called a photon. When this photon hits another energized atom, the atom produces its own photon with waves exactly in step with the first. Uh, These photons okay. hit more energized atoms and a chain reaction starts. Yeah, and they sort of like vibrate in a wave, but so normal light goes in like a wider wave, but yeah, the one on a laser is like really tight. The beam builds in intensity until it bursts through the semi-silvered mirror as a laser beam. Hey, cool. Yeah, I didn't realize that. That's picking up the excess energy of just an electron just being pulled from an atom and the excess energy coming off. That's pretty cool. I like that. Hmm. I've... <laughs> <laughs> Sad. I, I still can't remember off the top of my head what laser actually stands for. Um, no, what was it? Light something, something emitted radiation, something like that. Uh, yeah, I miss my book learnings. Hydraulic lifts, sprinklers. Yeah, like you'd spend a fair bit of time on it. This is sort of the days before, like if you want something besides the encyclopedia. Like, rather than flicking through it, it's just giving you, yeah, just little animated things like this. And this was definitely directed as, like, kids or young teens, just to kind of teach them the basics. Oh, yeah, let's see. Uh, yeah, here's how an old-school mouse worked. It's all infrared nowadays, but you used to have this, like, little roller wheel that would push these smaller rollers in the right direction as you move the mouse. Uh, they also used to get very dirty. You'd actually have to physically open up the mouse, take that ball out and like scrape all your dirt and gunk and stuff off those little rollers. They were, um, yeah, I'm glad that's changed. I, I must admit, I do have to blow out a little bit of, um, dust from the, um, infrared thing on my mouse, but that's cause you know, I do <laughs> a lot of stuff in my house is very dirty. Um, musical instruments, string instruments. Oh yeah. Movie projector. Still photographs. Oh yeah, that's right. So a projector worked similarly to an actual camera when it's recording. It's just rather than 
putting the image onto the frame. It's just projecting the light through it. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Good old old school film. And I remember how big film reels used to get, because they used to measure it in feet. So you'd have like the big canisters. It'd usually take like two or three to do like a one and a half. Yeah, I think it was like half an hour on one big reel. And I'd have to like stagger it, like have one playing and then the other one would be timed to go off when one finishes or something like that. So like, yeah, I've heard some people getting jobs as projectionists and yeah, before it went digital, like that side of it seemed pretty cool. Uh, photo booth. Yeah, we checked out a PC, didn't we? Yeah, Periscope's pretty basic. Photocopier. Uses a scanning lamp and a photo-sensitive drum to copy documents instantly. Lamp transfers the image of the document to the drum. This uses a static charge to record the image and pick up powdered ink called toner. The toner is then transferred to the paper, making a copy. Yeah, that was how... Because you always used to see photocopiers more than you did actual printers too, didn't you? Actually, no, show me the, um, there was an actual animated thing for that one. <laughs> PC load letter, what the fuck does that mean? <laughs> He's a little frustrated. I remember they used to jam up a fair bit too. Photocopiers, grand piano, piston pump, plow. Okay, and yeah, we did see a quartz clock before. Yeah, record players were fun. Spiral groove of vinyl record traces out the waveforms of a particular sound as the disc revolves on the turntable. The tip of the silence follows the groove. Undulations in the groove cause a tiny current to flow into the amplifier. Loudspeakers convert the magnified electrical signals into sound. Um, I watched QI recently and they did something... No, no, it might have been Last Leg. Um, they used something else as a record needle, and I forgot what it was. I only just saw it the other day. Typical of my bloody um, memory. Yeah, belt drive to turn the turntable. And that's obviously not how you pick up. They're doing a giant one for us. Okay. Radio. Radio telescope. How did that work? Yeah, it just picks up radio waves, puts them in the antenna. Light. Yep, Mary Poppins. Oh, there's little clickable stuff. I didn't realise there was little clickable stuff. That was the only one that came up as a hotspot. You want to... Yeah, Alien is Mary Poppins. Confirmed. There you go. Uh, radio receiver. I just realised what the sound is of, like, um, when I click go back. That's a um, slide project. No... Yeah, some, something mechanical going around. Sounded like a slide projector to me. And yep. Gonna take over the world one day, these robots. Oh, <laughs> shit. Oh, that's terrible. Yep, yeah, okay. Robot mammoth. There we go. What's teaching a robot involve? Um, robot must be taught how to do even the easiest of jobs. Simple robots repeat a series of movements until stopped. More complex robots are equipped with sensors and detectors so they can act with a degree of intelligence. The operator can Yeah, a lot of... Uh, I, I remember a few games that would, like, teach you basic programming to, like, move a little robot around a maze. I think Dr. Brain was so like that. Them on demand. The what are the other good ones? Um, by sending instructions directly to its the, not learning adventure. Using a um, the guys who did, like, Treasure Mountain... Um, Oh, what were they? The Super Solvers series. That's the one. The old DOS ones. And they'd, like, integrate a game into learning stuff. Yeah, so, like, robot programming, science basics, spelling, a bit of maths, I think. There are a lot of different games with those. I think, yeah, there is a Windows 3.1 version of um, Treasure Mountain I might have to find, because that was the one I played at school the most. That was good fun. Rockets. Rotary pumps. Oh yeah, use gears to push shit around. On um, there's different types, centrifugal, peristal, peristaltic, okay. And rotary veins, yes. Lots of rotary engines. Um, yep, yeah, rockets, satellites, platform scales, scuba. Uh, I should know what scuba is off 
Yeah, there we go. They just told me. Self-contained underwater breathing apparatus. Put together by, like, Jack Cousteau and the like back in the day. When you dive, the pressure of the surrounding water pushes the diaphragm inward. This pushes on a lever which opens the air inlet valve. As air flows in from the tank, it pushes the diaphragm back out, closing the valve. The air is now at the same pressure as the water. When you breathe in, the suction pulls the diaphragm inward and the valve opens to let in more air. When you breathe out, your breath pushes open the exhaust valve and bubbles out into the water. Yep. That's how a regulator works. Um, what else we got? Mouthpiece, first stage. Oh, you're gonna need a big tank for that mammoth. Yeah, God, I have not been scuba diving for a long time. I think last time I tried, I was like smoking heavily at the time, and like the pressure of the wetsuit and the um, the regulator like fucked with me a bit. I actually got anxious and just started using more air. And yeah, didn't, just couldn't go through with it, unfortunately. Ultrasound scanner. Oh, you got a baby. It's a baby inside there. It's got a cricket. Oh, shit. <laughs> That's cool. Give him a little kick. Um, yep, sound waves produce images inside of a patient's body. Yes, I've a few of those. I had one on my shoulder recently. Uh, yeah, window shade. Shavers, staplers, and yeah, a couple of repeats. Telescope, toilet tank. Yep, yeah, that's right. Toilet tanks are pretty simple. Uh, I thought mine had stuffed up because um, mine kept refilling. I thought like the floater thing had stuffed itself, but no, it seems to be working okay now. Um. <laughs> you get covered in toilet water. Oh no, that's show just showing off a siphon pipe. Okay. Candle. Oh, it just animates the whole thing. Yep. Straightforward. Um, bup, bup, bup. Get back. What else we got? Transformer. Not the kind you're thinking of. Um, oh yeah, Transformer changes the voltage of an electricity supply. That's right. Um, does it say? Consists two coils wound onto an iron core, and an alternating voltage travels through the primary coil, produces a changing magnetic field in the core. This induces an alternating voltage onto the secondary coil. Depending on the relative number of turns in the coils, the voltage will increase or decrease. There's, oh, the, yeah, that's right. So you do a step up one to put it through the big lines, and then a step down. I'm surprised they didn't implement that for like um, Factorio or stuff like that. Because I know you use a fair bit of electricity in that one. Thermostat. Oh yeah, remote control. Infrared rays. Yeah, it's all... Yeah, even today it's all infrared, isn't it? When you press it? a button on the remote control to change television channel, for example, the microprocessor sends a pulse signal to the transmitter LED. The LED changes the pulses of electricity into pulses of infrared light, which travel across the room. At the receiving end, a photodiode in the television changes the infrared pulses back into electrical pulses. <laughs> a microprocessor in the television interprets the pulses and changes the channel. Ah, oh, that sounds like The Wild Bunch. Love that movie. Um, what else we got? Yeah, telephones, video recorders. Oh yeah, show off the video recorder for the kids. Back in the days before digital, it was all on, yeah, little, little magnetic tapes. Code signals from a television station or camera can be also playback signals to a television set. Records the signal onto magnetic tape, which moves past video, picture, and audio sound recording heads. The tape heads detect the signal from the tape on playback. Yeah, just record, buddy. Oh, no, it's actually, yeah, I didn't know that. It's arranged diagonally on the tape instead of, like, perpendicular. Okay. Yeah, cool. All right. 
different. Loading a tape. Oh yeah, it's, cassettes worked on the same principle, didn't they? Yeah, cool. Guide drama, what do you had? And all that broke. Yeah, we used to learn. Used to have to get our video player fixed all the damn time. Vacuum flask, wind turbines, woodwind instruments, x-rays. What's exciting stuff for x-rays? Oh, he's got sortifs. X-ray tube. Cathode, electrons, when yeah. When you turn on the x-ray tube, electrons flow from the negative cathode towards a tungsten target set in the positive copper anode. These electrons produce x-rays in two ways. First, an electron may be slowed and deflected by a tungsten atom, giving off an x-ray photon as it loses energy. Second, an incoming electron may knock one of the tungsten atom's own electrons out of an inner orbit. An x-ray photon is produced as an electron from an outer orbit moves in to take its place. Yeah, right. The tungsten target is angled so that the X-ray beam emerges from a window in the side of the tube. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty cool. Mm, and zippers. Ah, oh, cool. Yeah, yeah, that's a cool little picture. Just showing off the wedges, like showing you how the zipper works. More elephant. Yeah. Okay. Um, so what have we got for scientific principles? Oh, oh, okay, okay. So it's just showing you... Is there like an index for the science principles? Yeah, there we go. Well, there's a fair few there. Electromagnetism, pressure, photography, police, light and images, cams and cranks. Yeah, kind of a bit of everything in there, isn't there? Sensors and detectors. Uh, sensors and detectors are designed to detect the presence of something, like burglars, and are often able to measure it as well. Some sensors detect objects through direct contact. For example, a pressure pad might sense the weight of a burglar. Remote sensors can detect objects without coming into contact with them. Radar, for example, uses radar, radio waves to track aircraft. Oh, we got a little animated thing for it. Cool. <laughs> Mammoth sensitivity. Okay. After the runaway success of my pressure-sensitive burglar alarm, I thought of other ways in which the Mammoth's sensing abilities could be put to use. I tried one experiment at the airport, using Mammoths as metal detectors. Large items in luggage were easily located. But I fear the damage caused to passenger relations was irreparable. And so I turned to experiments with mammoth breath testers. The response to intoxicating fumes was instant. But the workforce needed to bring the mammoth round was enormous. <laughs> yeah, that's cool. Little animated thing on there. Do we get, like, one for every concept? Or just After the run No, we just had a look at that one. And go back to the principles. Pressure. We'll get a little. Oh no, we get. Yeah, okay. No, we get them moving for each one. That's cool. Firefighting mammoths have learnt to take in enough water to extinguish a blaze. However, getting the water out is more of a problem. But if the water-filled mammoth is placed in front of a sturdy post and firmly squeezed with a piston, the water is forcefully discharged. Just shove this piston up your ass. I'll get the water out. The mammoth's powerful inhalation can create a serious hazard for onlookers. <laughs> yeah, these are kind of cute. I like these. And yeah, definitely a fun way of teaching you, yeah, these kind of concepts, aren't they? Alright, let's check out magnetism. Drying mammoth clothing has often created problems of shrinkage. I therefore hired a blacksmith to build a mammoth-shaped clothes dryer. 
During the construction, a thunderstorm swept overhead and a bolt of lightning hit the metal dryer. The blacksmith's tools flew through the air and attached themselves to the clothes dryer, dropping to the floor when the lightning had passed. Both blacksmith and mammoth were overwhelmed by the experience. <laughs> yeah, fair enough. Yep. Um, where are Dr. Magnus Springs. Let's check out Springs. Yeah, just cool little... I like this sort of stuff. Like, the more... I know you've got limited space on a disc, but, um, yeah, it's always cool to see how much they can actually fit Despite on their black animation camera, and stuff like that. Mammoths are ill-suited to inside work. But their love of the outdoors makes them eager helpers in an agricultural environment. During one particularly heavy coconut harvest, mammoths were used to bend the palm trees so that the farmer could reach the nuts. However, problems arose when the mammoth became distracted and released the rope prematurely, distributing the coconuts, the farmer, and the mammoth far and wide. <laughs> Yeah, these are cute. These are fun. Uh, what else we got? Springs? Yeah, screws. What the fuck, screws? Um, yeah, and there's even, like, um, little extra bits showing, yeah, how screws work. There you go. A recently discovered document proves the enormous intelligence of mammoths. A knight and his trusty mammoth were trying to rescue a beautiful princess trapped in a tower. The knight charged up the steps of the tower, only to find that the door was locked. Now the mammoth had a bright idea. Holding a tree trunk, he began to turn the tower. And to the knight's amazement, the tower began to screw itself into the ground, so the princess could leap to safety. <laughs> yep, that mammoth's getting some booty tonight. <laughs> um, yeah, we did sensors, gears and belts. And that's, oh, that's actually meant to be like a mini golf course, is it? Yeah, that's different. Hmm. The first use of mammoths for entertainment was in the famous carousel experiment. Carrots were used to bribe the mammoths to turn one wheel. But even though the mammoths moved with alarming speed, the crowd still appeared bored. <laughs> I therefore had the mammoths move to the larger wheel, and the chairs hung from the smaller one. This new arrangement proved to be much more exciting. <laughs> Just all flying off. Nice. Okay. Uh, what else we got? Do we do... Oh, there's, separate, there's electricity magnetism and electromagnetism. Okay. It was common practice for farmers near my laboratory to harvest lemons using a copper lance. I decided to help by equipping the workers' mammoths with some lightweight zinc rods which I had left over from an earlier experiment. I was surprised to see both workers and mammoths seized by invisible forces each time they speared a lemon. Although the farmers were shocked by this turn of events, I could foresee some useful applications for this new source of power. <laughs> Just power your house with giant lemons, sure. Okay, um, no, we didn't do flying, did we? Let's check out flight. Yeah, let's get this mammoth in the air, shall we? once came upon a delivery mammoth preparing to transport a screen. During a sudden gust of wind, the beast was perturbed to find himself lifted into the air, returning to the ground when the wind dropped. Inspired, I began my own experiments and found that a curved screen resulted in a smoother flight. <laughs> Even He's so, shitting himself. screen deliveries remained somewhat unpredictable. Hmm. 
usually need rudders and flaps to get that working. Incline planes. Hmm. Catching a mammoth involves stunning the beast with a gentle blow to its sensitive skull. <laughs> gentle blow, you say? However, raising the boulder high enough was quite a task, and not always successful. Huh? After much thought, I suggested replacing the tall towers with ramps made of earth. Not only did this require much less effort, it also increased the rate of mammoth capture. <laughs> and once caught, the mammoth was eager and ready for work. Hmm. What else we got? You did pressure. Yeah, let's look at photography. This is probably the highlight. I don't know what comes up on the history or inventor's side of thing. Might get some more info. But yeah, there's always a shit ton of information in these sort of I ones too, isn't there? Observed that the mammoth is capable of sleeping while standing up, sometimes sustaining its inactivity for days on end. While God, playing golf like me. one day, I noticed that the grass growing in the shadow of a particularly inert mammoth was less green than that on the rest of the course. I decided to see whether images other than those of mammoths could be captured. Back in my yard, I paid a local family to stand in a line at the edge of my lawn. Having designed restraints for the younger members of the family, I had them return for the next five days, each time standing in the same places. The result was a perfect image of the family. Despite investing in a frame for my picture, however, it proved unsuitable for public exhibition. <laughs> Cool. All right. Well, I have no. I don't forget. I'm not meant to be pressing back. Be police. One little one for police. On milking a mammoth. I okay. Found on my travels, that mammoth milk was highly nutritious. Though obtaining it was a dangerous task, the animals being notoriously touchy, I decided that some also helps if they female. I used a system of wheels to lift the beast, and was surprised to find that the more wheels I ran the rope over, the easier it was to lift the mammoth. Although obtaining, I know we established this mammoth's female because it had a baby in the ultrasound. The harness was still in need of a few modifications. Hmm, this mammoth milk's a bit cloudy. Alright, um... Yeah, I'm just gonna have a look at history, just to see if there's exciting stuff in here. Like, other videos. Um, Industrial Revolution. Did we get a video or anything? Oh, you just get a timeline. Okay. And, sh oh, that's helpful. It shows off, like, all the other things they covered in the, um, the machine section. It just shows you who invented what. Okay. Boredom, binoculars. Yep, Alexander Graham Bell for the telephone and loudspeaker. Yep. Car cooling. Actually, I want to go to the 90s because, yeah, it's always interesting to see, like, when certain things were invented because some are, like, much later than you'd think. Um, what have we got? Breath test of 1938, 39 for a helicopter, 41 for a smoke detector, okay. Um, do we get any spiels? Oh no, it just takes us back to the, um, the actual info on it, doesn't it? Let's just go back. Yep, solar cells. Dot matrix printer was made in the 50s, okay. Video recorder, satellites, ultrasound was 58, yeah, 60 for lasers. <laughs> the salad spinner in the 70s, yeah, right. This was a legit thing. Okay. Oh, yeah, just doing gears and stuff. I vaguely remember we had one of those. Just shake your fucking lettuce. Like, stop being lazy. 
microprocessor, yeah, smart card was 70s, camcorder was 80s, don't really go much past there, do we? What do we got for inventors? Uh, scrapbook of inventors, the research of the great woolly mammoth, and we just turn the page. Oh, and there's probably like, yeah, okay, okay, and it just gives you a quick spiel on each inventor. Yeah, righto. Yeah, I might just finish. I'll finish these up, and that'll probably be it for this one. Yeah, it's... How are they going to integrate? Oh, look at the smart mammoth. Um, no. oh. Mammoth memory, you say? Okay. I once came upon a forest mammoth who could both count and remember several numbers at a time. His enterprising owner, a logger by trade, would tap a tusk once for each log needed. A pull on his tail would send him off to bring back the requested number of trees. I decided to expand the mammoth's skills by teaching him addition. Yeah, the floor it beans. was a mistake, however, like to beans. have him calculate our restaurant bill. Although he got the total <laughs> amount right, he delivered the answer in logs. <laughs> That's cool. Alright, what else we got? Heat. Alright. Ooh, one hot mammoth. <laughs> Just making a shower for whoever's in here and this guy. Righto. Mammoth shower with your dad simulator, I guess. I have often observed that the thing mammoths love most, with the possible exception of eating, is to sleep in the sun. I found that the heat absorbed by a mammoth during the day could be employed in providing a hot shower. A mammoth can similarly be used to pass heat to a cold bed. The only problem being <laughs> removing the animal at bedtime. Yeah, that's the easy way As a doing commercial it. concern, a mammoth makes a fine heated clothes press. It is essential, however, to use nimble employees for this task, <laughs> as the mammoth may resume its original position at any time. <laughs> cool. So what do we have left? Do we do cams and cranks? I can't remember. Memory's gone again. I recently came across an ingenious use of mammoth power. Where the fuck are all these mammoths coming from, by the way? Like, you say they're intelligent, but they're extinct now. Like, they obviously weren't smart enough to fix that, were they? Ooh, giant omelets, you say? That's a big-ass omelet. Nice. I like that. Uh, I actually got enough. Yeah, I was going to do a frittata at some point, so I've got heaps of eggs there. String instrument, sound waves. Yeah, fair enough. I'm glad they picked the trunk end for the wind instrument. Just try to showcase that. The mammoth is not renowned for its abilities as a musician. So I was most surprised to witness three brave musicians using a mammoth to produce innovative music. A tightly strung tail produced an interesting twang. The animal's taut belly made an admirable boom, while a sharp tap with a hammer made the tusks chime quite pleasantly. The resulting music, <laughs> yep, two notes at the time, call, could only be described as experimental. So we had sound. Yeah, we just got these couple left. Levers. Yep. A mammoth hygiene, okay. The smell of a mammoth's sleeping quarters was notoriously bad. To control this problem, keepers trained their mammoths to sleep on mats, which had to be changed with some regularity. Moving a beast to change the foul-smelling fabric, however, was not an easy task. <laughs> One day, I observed that a certain keeper had less trouble than others. 
I was astonished to see that by easing one end of a long pole beneath the creature's massive bulk, the keeper had constructed a simple lever that enabled him to lift the mammoth single-handed. Yeah, cool. <laughs> Just that face. Uh, levers, yeah. Electricity. <laughs> Hello? Yes, it's mammoth. It was common practice. Oh no, we did this one. Yeah, mammoth lemons. Um, let's go back. Mammoth lemons. Magnetism was that something different? Yeah. Fucking magnets. ICP. This is how they work. Although mammoths motherfucking mammoths. Wear shoes to protect their delicate feet, frequent shoe renewal can become a chore. In the search for longer-lasting footwear, the local blacksmith happened upon some pieces of iron of the right size and shape. However, after the first fitting of the new design, a powerful attraction between the shoes prevented all movement on the part of the wearer. <laughs> oh yeah, it shows you the basics of like, you know, positive and negative charges. Oh, let's say you're showing off how a signal works. Okay. In the mountainous southern areas, villagers communicated by using the age-old system of catapulting mammoth couriers <laughs> from one village to the next. However, the system was threatened by a shortage of volunteer mammoths. <laughs> in my new yeah, system, fuck you, I'm not going back. Stones of varying size you send your dick pics in your own time, buddy. And were collected by a receiver. Unfortunately, the catapulter's aim was not always what it could have been. Mm. Yeah, showing you that, like, not every part of the signal gets the receiver. Okay. Um. Well, that was pretty cool. Oh, you can, like, print out the pages and stuff. And it just shows you that there's a whole list of the movies on here as well. Okay. Yeah, that's cool. All right, we might finish that one there. That was fun. That, yeah, it seemed to work out pretty well, I suppose.